Those who come after feel after, inshallah. <laughs> Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاح حي على الصلاح حي على فلاح حي على فلاح Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allah. La ilaha illa Hey Muslims, believers, our guests, I greet you with peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Nasta'inuhu wa nasta'firhu wa nu'minu bihi azza wa jal. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahduhu la shariha la. Allahu al-mulk wa lahi al-hamd. يحيي ويميت هو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد أيها المسلمون. With Allah's name, the merciful, benefactor, the merciful redeemer, the praise and thanks and gratitude be to Allah, the Lord, the cherisher, the sustainer, the nourisher, the nurturer the evolver of all the systems of knowledge. We seek his help and we beg his forgiveness, putting our complete faith and trust in him, mighty and able to enforce his will as he. To him belongs all things in the dominion. Again, the praise is solely for him, and he has complete control and mastery over all things. We witness that none deserves worship besides Allah alone. He has no partners. He needs no help, no assistance in his rule of the heavens of the earth. And we witness that Muhammad, to whom the Quran was revealed, is Allah's servant and messenger. We pray the prayers and the peace be upon Muhammad, upon his family, his companions, the righteous all. Amen. Amen. We thank Allah for allowing us to have another opportunity to worship him Another day to witness the Jama'ah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all the benefits of this day. We seek Him. And we take ourselves to him seeking the desired results for our good works. 
and we put our hope in his promise, in his promise. He says to us in the Quran that certainly the believers will be successful. Certainly the believers will be successful. <coughs> and we trust that regardless of circumstance, regardless of what we might be encountering in our lives, we trust that if we do our part, the part of the faithful, remaining faithful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill his promise. He will fulfill his promise and we in turn will also be successful in whatever endeavor, whatever endeavor. So feel good today, inshallah ta'ala. We are here trying to respond and answer the call from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be in this space at this time. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alameen. Dear brothers and sisters, life has its many challenges. It has its many, many challenges. And we see them every single day. Some of them big, some of them small, but challenges nonetheless. And we are also subject to complicating our own lives even further than just the natural trials and tribulations of life. <coughs> in fact, there was one of the, the prophets in the Quran and he saw himself and he recognized that he himself was culpable to, to his own self. And he said, in response, he said, Inni, inni dhalamtu nafsi. He said, surely I have oppressed, I have oppressed my own self. I have wronged my own self. We think about the challenges of life. Most, most readily we think about maybe something external imposing itself on us. Something external coming to impose itself, impose its will on us and, and, and take us out of our form. And, and we, we identify that as the oppressor or some oppression, systematic, whatever, whatever. We, we're not going to argue this oppression in general. But upon further look, we have to all, uh, also, and, prob and I would even say more readily, we have to firstly think about how, uh, the ways in which we contribute to our own oppression, our own subjugation, the way we get in our own way. We get in our own way. And he said, as he was calling out to Allah, begging Allah and making dua, he said, Inni dhalam tu nafsi. Surely I have oppressed my own self. I have wronged my own self. I put my own self in darkness. We ask Allah to protect us from this, inshallah. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam communicates as only he can to use few words to say a whole lot. Few words to say a whole lot. And one of the traditions, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, he said that faith has two parts. Faith has two parts. He said its first part it's patience. It's patience. And its second part is gratitude. Faith has two parts. The first part is patience, and the second is gratitude. Gratitude. So the equation in our minds is 
patience plus gratitude equals faith. Now we know, because we've studied this and we've studied the Quran and we've learned that he attributes many other things to faith over the course. But again, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, again, the masterful, wonderful communicator that he was, understood his audience. And he also knew what they needed to hear and what and areas by which they were struggling. So he, he encapsulated it in faith. And faith is these, this. And this. It's this and this. So when we think about this, the, the saying of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, readily that comes to our mind is this idea of in times of difficulty, loss, or some affliction that the believer, the faithful one, is patient. They patiently endure. But also in times of success and plentiful bounty, the believer shows gratitude. They're grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the many blessings that he has conveyed for them. Difficulty, patience. Abundance, gratitude. When, everything, when everything's hitting, you know you have these times in your life where you feel like you're hitting a stride. Your life has, has this way of kind of building momentum. Things seem to be falling into place for you, so seemingly falling into place for you. We've all experienced this. And we can't attribute to this or that. As, you know, we know it's beyond us because you didn't know how it actually all kind of came together. You didn't know. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought it together for us. Gratitude. It's a moment of gratitude. You know you didn't do that on your own. You know that didn't come at your hands. You know that you didn't facilitate that, that level of success that you might be, you didn't, do, you didn't, you didn't know, you were, you were in distress. So the believer's response to favorable conditions is that of gratitude. Be grateful. Be grateful. And likewise, the challenges of life come to us, one after another, seemingly. And we've all experienced it, it seemed like it, can't, it was coming from all directions. Sometimes we may have called out, I can't catch a break. I can't catch a break anywhere. The belief is feeling a sense of, of distress. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is inviting us in that moment, inviting us to be patient. To be patient. Now, patience in Islam is not the patience that they sell you on, on TV or in the fairy, in the, in the, in the, the fairy uh, stories. It's not that. Patience in Islam, sabr, sabr in Islam is, the, the, is, the, is that I am patiently waiting the results, the outcomes that I'm desiring while I'm working every day towards them. Patience in Islam does not mean idle, like go sit down. No. Patience is, is, is managing my expectations relative to what I'm striving for and allowing me to work within the context and say that, that I, am, I am being patient to realize the results, but I'm working hard every single day. Every single day. And when the farmer understands that when he plants his seed, he won't see the fruit immediately. He won't see it immediately. But he tills the soil. He waters it. He fertilizes it. He turns it over. He attends to it as he should every single He's diligent every single day. At the crack of dawn, he's up every single day. And he's attending to it because he knows in time it will show itself. So he's able to be patient while he's working. This is, this is the picture. If I can give you a snapshot, a picture of supper in Islam, this is what it is. It's patiently awaiting the outcomes, the results, while you're working diligently towards your aims. So dear Muslims, be patient. 
And be willing to endure. Be willing to endure. We ask Allah to grant us and increase us in patience, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says to us in the Quran, وَمَا بِكُمْ وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةِ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ إِذَا مَسَاقُمُ إِمَا مَسَاقُمُ دَرُوفَ إِلَيْهِ تَجْعَرُونَ تَجْعَرُونَ He said, and nothing good comes but from Allah. Or we can say, whatever blessing that you receive is from Allah. Whatever blessing you receive is from Allah. But thereafter, when you are touched with some distress, and when you are touched with some distress, it's you that you call on him. You cry it to him. You bring it to him. So we're setting, he's setting the, the, the parameters, the context for faith that whatever we have good in our lives comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm inviting you in this moment, this in your moment, your quiet moment, in, in the midst of Jummah, to think about a good thing that happened to you today. Just since you woke up. He said, ain't nothing happened to me. Good. <laughs> Allah says to us in the Quran, he says, if they were to try to number the blessings, never would they be able to number them. So I invite you again. Just since you woke up, that good thing that happened to you, that you know didn't come by your hand, it didn't come simply by your hands. I'll put it that way. If it was a good, it was from Allah. If it was a good, it's from Allah. This is how we have to be that conscious and that aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala working in our lives every single day. If it was a good thing, I reflect on life. I reflect on my day. Not, not even over the course of a long period of time. I just sit down about the end of my day and I just recall the events of the day. And I think about the things that happened to me in my day. And I know there were favorable things that happened to me in my day. And I'm grateful to Allah, and I know it wasn't my own doing. This is the disposition of the faithful. It was not your own doing. It was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, when I see something good happen to me, I show gratitude. And, and, and Allah says to us in the Quran, and he said, and if you show gratitude, I'll give you more. So I show gratitude, then he shows me something again. A good thing again. So in turn, I, I become more gratitude, gratified to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then he shows me something again. You know, the mind is a very powerful thing. And consciousness is a very powerful thing. If you're conscious of something and you're looking for something, you will see it. You will see it. I said this, mentioned this before some time ago. Uh, when I was growing up, one of my first vehicles that I had was this, this car that I had. And I had this, you know, I was over, over excited about it, you know. And it, and it was red. It was a red car, too, right? <clears throat> so. And, and in my mind, it was, it was unique. I, li I, you know, I, I like that. You know, I love that car. I love the car. I was going to say I like the car. I love the car. <laughs> I, love the, 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 I love the car. So I'm, I'm, so I'm in the car. I'm driving the car. I pull up at the stop, and I see the car. And I, it's, a, it's the red car. So I'm, I'm in the car now. And I'm moving about. And lo and behold, I look across, I'm at a stoplight, and, and the traffic, oncoming traffic, looking at me. And I look across, and what do I see? I see another car that looked like my car. Now, am I to believe that I had the only car that looked like this? Is that unique? No. But I was more conscious of this, so I began to see them more. And the more I moved around, I said, oh, oh there's another one. There's, a, there's another one there. 
the more conscious you are of looking for the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more you will see them. Be conscious, Muslims. And when you notice and when you register that favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, turn in gratitude to Allah. Just thank Allah, even to your own self. Alhamdulillah. You don't have to make no public display. Just make, just make, just make a, a quiet dua within your own. Allah knows. He said, and if you show gratitude, I'll give you more. This is the, he giving us keys, keys to success. One of them is just gratitude. Be grateful. Grateful for what? Grateful for everything that you have. So if they try to number the blessings, they will never be able to count them. They will never be able to count them. I just want you to just sit with that for just a moment, inshallah. It goes on, He says, and when he removes a distress or harm from you, he said, behold, some of them, some of them turn to others. They turn to other gods. They, they attribute things to Allah. They attribute things to Allah. So he's giving us two pictures now. One, a person who recognizes that all good comes from Allah, and when, a, and when anything comes in, they go to Allah. They turn right to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he gives us another screen, another picture, another focus of the one who he helps in the same way, but them, once they are clear from their hurt, their distress, they attribute it to something else. They attribute it to something else. See, in order for scripture to be alive in us, you have to see yourself in the narrative. We, can, we have a tendency, we want to say, those people over there, that's how they do. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us a description of the human condition. This is you. This is me. That time when you didn't show gratitude, when all these things, and you said, I'll never get nothing. I laugh about it now. I can remember times when I wanted more than what I thought. I, my, I thought I should be getting more than, my, than what I was having as, as a young, as a child. So I would go to my parents like, I, you know, I want, I want them shoes. You know, I had a pair of shoes, but I didn't, had, I didn't have those shoes. We all know what those shoes are. I had a pair of shoes, but they weren't, they weren't those, those shoes. So I go, I go, I make my case to my pay. I make my case. I want those shoes. Well, we know I, those shoes. They cost too much. They whatever, whatever the response. The answer was no. Well, I want those shoes. Then I made. I had the audacity to say, I don't, I don't never get what I want. I don't never get what I want. You know, it's an interesting thing that, that as parents that I didn't appreciate until I became a parent. And it's a thing, it's called memory. And sometimes we have to have our memory refreshed. All right? So as I'm making my case and getting all in, in a huff about, about what I don't have, then my, 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 my mother, she would say, didn't you just eat? Did you not just eat a hot meal right now? Do you not have a roof over your head? Do you remember when I, do you recall, do you remember? Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does the same thing to us. He said, remember when? 
He tells, he said, remember when you was on the brink of the pit of fire and I pulled you back. You remember when you were about to go off the edge and I pulled you back. Remember that you might be grateful, that you might demonstrate gratitude. Remember. And gratitude that leads to disbelief. Part of its function is to forget. You forgot. You forgot when you were when you when you were in that jam, that situation, and you said, "Oh, if you if you get me out of this here, I, I'll never do this. If you see me, if you see your way out of, out of this, I, I, I won't. You you won't have to worry about me anymore. And then you got out miraculously with the help of Allah only, only to turn away." And continue on. I want you to see yourself in this narrative. Because I don't have to know your full story, but I know what happens to you because I know you're human. And this is, this is about the human condition. The human condition. The Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, faith has two parts. Two parts. Shukr is to recognize a blessing and to display it. To recognize a blessing. To acknowledge it and to, and, and to, to acknowledge it. To see it, to know it, and to display it. Because you know, you can know something and not acknowledge it. You can know things and not, that, that's not gratitude. It is to, to, is to know and acknowledge it. That's, that's how we are grateful. That's how we demonstrate gratitude. The opposite of, of it, kufr. You know, kufr is a, the, 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 this language is, all, is conflates right to disbelief. That's a disbeliever, the disbeliever. A, a more, a more of a, uh, the essence of this language, the essence of this term, it means to hide something. It means to cover something up. You know it and you covered it up. Kind of like what's going on right now in, in, in our political atmosphere. They know things and they cover things. All right, that's the end of that commentary. <laughs> but it, mean, it means when you know something, but you, you hide something or you conceal something. You hide and you conceal something. How many times have we known something? Unless, and, and we didn't acknowledge it. Then we, we slide into that category. It's not just those people over there. Is what I'm saying. Is that we have a tendency, we have to work to guard against this in our own lives every single day. Every single day. We ask Allah to protect us from this, inshallah. Gratitude means to understand that the real owner of this wonderful bounty, whatever it is, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the close of the first part of the khutbah, I just want to share this with you. You, me, we don't own anything. Just, 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 just take it in. Take that in. I don't own anything. Except my deeds. That money you have in your pocket, which we're going to ask for some today, inshallah. I'm just getting you ready. <laughs> it's not yours anyway. It's not yours anyway. It's not yours anyway. So we're going to ask for what Allah has entrusted you with. That home you have, that car you have, those possessions you have, that skill that you have. 
that knowledge set that you have. You know, that, 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 that one particular thing that you do better than, than, than the, the masses do. That's a skill not on your own. Allah gave that to you. It's not yours. It's not yours. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us be more grateful. Amen. We ask Allah to help us demonstrate a spirit of gratitude. Amen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in patience. Amen. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله كريم صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عما بعد أيها المسلمون فقولوا مما رزقكم الله حلالا وطيبا واشكروا نعمة الله إن كنتم أياه تعبدون. so eat and enjoy. The sustenance which Allah has provided for you. One of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ar razak ar razak He is the one who provides. He provides for our needs. He provides for our needs. And by the way, dear Muslims, when you are in need of something, Allah says, call on me, listen carefully, by my names, plural. Call on me by my names. I'm in need of sustenance. Ya Razak. Ya Razak. I'm in need of faith. Increase. Ya Al Mu'min. Al Mu'min. I need some peace in my life. As-salam. I need to be redeemed. I need to be made in anew again. After I've hurt my own self. Ya Ar-Rahim. Ya Ar-Rahim. Redeem me. Rahim, the merciful one, is the one who gives you your value back again. He said, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. I grant you from the bounty, and then once you have it and you mess it up, you got to turn back to Allah. Ar Rahim restores you and give you back your, give, give you, put you back on good footing again. Ar Rahim. Ar Rahim. But He is the one who provides your sustenance for you, the lawful and the good. So be grateful for the favors of Allah. If it is him who you serve. <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in my conclusion, dear Muslims, he points us to the story of Moses, Musa alayhi salam, in the Quran. You know, Musa is the most often mentioned prophet in the Quran, more than Muhammad, more than all of them, Musa alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mission or commissioned Musa alayhi salam commissioned him to go out and to save his people. To save his people. And, and Allah says to him, Well, look at Arsalna Musa bi ayatina and akhraj qawmika min dhulumati illa nur. He says, he says, and we sent Moses with our signs by our command to bring, he said, and bring your people from darkness into light. And teach them, Allah says, وَذِكْرَهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ Teach them of the, of the days of Allah. فِي ذَلِّكَ لِأَيَّاتِ لِكُلِّ صَبَارٍ شَقُورٍ He said, and these are signs for those who have patience, and grateful. When you remind them, 
when you remind the patient and the grateful of the, day, of the days of Allah, they are coming. But they were coming out of a bad situation. And as a quick footnote here, Allah sent Moses to his people. His people. I thought that was very keen when I read to his people. To your people. Specifically, your people. But if you know the story of Moses, if you know his story, Moses was, was a man who was also, his people was in bondage. And through circumstances, you know the story, they came, they were trying to oppress them, etc., put him in, they said, shipped him out, and he, he ended up in the house of the Pharaoh. So Moses went from an oppressed state to what we would call in today's language, a privileged state. He grew up among, amongst Pharaoh in the Pharaoh's house. Amongst in Pharaoh's house. And how easily could it have been for him just to enjoy his privilege? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not determine that to be his lot. So he called him to go back from his privileged state to go back and to save his people. But, but part of the method that he was going to do it was he was going to remind them about what is to come. The days of Allah. The Muslims, we all need to be reminded of this. We all need to be reminded of this. The days of Allah. The day when Allah makes settles all accounts. Sets all things aright. No small thing will be out of place. All the credits will be responded. And he says, and he will not wrong any of us in the least. In the least. But he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he had to remind them. And he told Moses, remind them. And he said, call to mind the favor of Allah when he delivered you from the people of Pharaoh. <coughs> to show gratitude and to be responsive to them. Remember when your situation was dire. And, I, and we improved it for you. Remember this. So anytime you want to feel down, you want to feel some sort of way, remember when, you was, when, when, when that thing happened. I say that thing because that thing is different for each of us. Remember when that thing happened and you didn't know. But Allah pulled you through that thing. Be grateful and he will give you more. And do it with patience the hardship that comes to you. Faith, according to Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has two parts. Patience and gratitude. Dear believers, I want to bring your attention to a couple things. And how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a way of just really reminding us about things that are important. We saw one of the, 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 the great superstars of, of sports be killed not, not, not even a week ago. And people have all kinds of commentary about it, but the thing that I registered out of it is how fragile life is. It does not matter your possessions. It does not matter your status. It does not have matter what you possess. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala determines it is your time, and all those times have been determined for all of us right now. And part of the mercy of Allah, part of his mercy, is that we don't know. That's a mercy from God that you don't know. It would paralyze you. You would just be sitting on the side just waiting for that day to come. Or destroying yourself. So part of mercy from Allah is keeping information from us. Thank Allah we don't know. 
but we know it's coming. We've seen just this recently the oppression of our Palestinian brothers and sisters put in our face again. It's trying to strip them of their humanity. It's trying to strip them of their humanity. We ask Allah subhanahu to protect them. Use your voices, dear believers. Use your voices. We're in the, pr whatever you think about your condition right now, and I know I'm taking a little bit of time, but I, I think the Palestinian issue is important. Whatever you think about your situation in America right now, understand that you still are privileged. So we, we, we're oppressed. Yeah, in one focus we are, but in another, we're privileged. They can't, they can't go to Al-Aqsa for Jummah. You had messed it anew freely. You walked here and... So in one focus, yes, they are... But another focus, privileged. Use your privilege for those who are oppressed. Use your voices, dear Muslims. Use them. Don't be silent about this. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a spirit of gratitude and to protect us from ingratitude and disbelief. Rabbina atina fi dun hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina adha binar. Our Lord give us excellence in this life and excellence in the life to come and protection from the torment of the fire. Ameen. Iqam as salat. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa Allah. Ashadu anna muhammad rasulullah. Ayya ala salah. Ayya ala falah. Come at the solar, come at the solar. Allah, who Akbar, Allah, who Akbar, Allah, 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 الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قل هو الله أحد الله صمد لم يعلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمع الله من حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر. الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاصق إذا وخب ومن شر النفآفات في الأقاد ومن شر حاسد إذا حصد الله أكبر سمع الله من حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم السلام عليكم just a couple of brief announcements and just their beliefs first uh, make sure please give and give generously the brothers and sisters have the, the cap boxes just one here make sure you give before you leave inshallah to Allah to support the, uh, the activities and the programs here at the Masjid there's also lunches for sale that supports our hot meals program so you buy lunch feed yourself but that we've built in enough uh, extra in that that it can also help to feed somebody else who's hungry inshallah to Allah so please support the lunch program and tonight, tonight, inshallah, at Isha, about 6.45, after Isha prayer, we're going to have the Umrah reflections. A few of us just returned from Umrah. We have a number of pictures to share. We want to also share reflections and have just an evening of community. So light refreshments and things. Be here right here at the match at 6.45 uh, for about, for, to about 8.30, inshallah. So please come out. Let's support. Let's, let's build community, inshallah ta'ala, and share the stories of Umrah, inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you.